Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of RK Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. I'm here at VDTA with a lot of your dealers who've been in training for classes for two or three days. We've had a great time. They're looking forward to your new Floriani products, new Floriani software teaching. So we're really excited, and they have a couple of more days of all kinds of new products from new vendors and we're having a great time. I wanted to create a design today and I wanted to talk to you about using the magic wand and images. This is something we all want to know about doing because there's always that business card, there's always that logo, or there's always that little design that we don't have that we would like to. So we're going to look at this and I'm going to tell you my software face looks a little different than normal and it's because I'm using the latest update that will be coming to you very soon. So you're, it's going to look a little bit different today, but we're going to only use the tools that you have available to you. So we're going to come down to our left-hand toolbar, and I am going to click on my backdrop tool. This is going to bring up my images. Now these are not vector files. These are images, JPEGs, bitmap, that type of file. So I'm going to scroll down, and there's a cute little heart that I want to use right here. So I'm going to left mouse click on it and open it. So this is my artwork. Now this tells me the width of this piece of artwork is 3.94 across. Now what it's saying is from this edge of the white to this edge of the white, it's 3.94 inches. Well, that's not the actual size of my image that I'm going to create into a design, is it? This is that one. So what I want to do is I want to just define the scale of the actual artwork that I'm working with because I want this to be three and a half inches. That's the size that I need my design to be. So with my artwork selected, we know it's selected because there's selection boxes, I am going to right mouse click and I'm going to tell it to define scale. With that, I can measure from here to here, let go and tell this, I want you to be 3.5 inches. Okay, so now it's going to adjust the artwork so that I know from here to here it's three and a half inches. It's, it's taken the white out of play. And why this is so valuable is let's say you have a business card and it's got a picture of a globe on it and it says world. I need that globe. I measure the logo and I know that globe needs to be an inch across. So I'm going to measure only the globe make that an inch because when I scanned it in, took a picture of it, it distorted the size. When I tell it to be an inch, what's going to happen is now your lettering, everything in that design is going to resize proportionate with your globe being an inch across. This is an invaluable tool when you're trying to get something the exact size. Now we always size our images prior to turning them into stitches, to creating our actual design. So now that I've done that, I'm going to come up here and this is my magic wand. So let's select our magic wand by left mouse clicking on it and I know I have it because it's stuck to my cursor. Now the next thing I want is a color. So I'm going to come down to my magnifying glass on the lower left hand corner and I'm going to type in red and tell it to find my reds. There they are. Now I'm going to look at this and I think I'm going to match this. I think this looks like that because I like the colors in this. Now you could make it a dark red, a white, a pink, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to select this pink. So now I've got that stuck to my cursor too. And with that I'm going to put my cursor on this side of the heart and left mouse click. Now notice over here in my items view, it just created a piece of artwork around that shape. So now I have a vector outline. I'm not dealing now with a JPEG or a bitmap, I'm dealing with a vector outline. Now I'm going to pick another color, which is a lighter pink, and I'm going to go ahead with my magic wand, 
I'm going to click on the other side of my little heart. So now notice I have the right side in one color, the left side in my second color. So with this done, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my backdrop tool. I no longer need this. So click on your backdrop tool again to select it. Right mouse click and deselect show backdrop. So now all I have is the artwork outlines. Great. So I'm going to select my first one and I am now going to turn this into stitches and you have lots of choices. You can turn it into a fill stitch, you can turn it into an applique, you can make it an appli stitch, you could fill it with stipple, you could fill it with cross stitch, you can have all kinds of fun here. The sky's the limit. Now I have selected this, I happen to decide I'm going to put a fancy fill in it. Now we have our standard fill and our fancy fills. So I'm going to click fancy fill. Now with that selected, I want you to come up here, the minute I click that, all my options for my fancy fill became came available. Oops, I was hovering over the edge. Now let's drop down this arrow and you can look through your fancy fills and you have a whole lot of fills in here. Look at all the fills that we have given you. This is just great. Now these are those embossed, textured, pretty fills you have and I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down really fast so you can just see how much we've added in here for you. Now you're going to pick something that you like. So you can come through but for the sake of the exercise don't take forever I'm going to pick right now I'm going to go ahead and pick 242. Now I'm going to apply that now if you want to know what it looks like, click away from it and click your 3D on your left hand toolbar. So you can see the texture I have put in that heart. Now remember I told you mine software is updated. Did you notice when I selected this it turned into a selection color instead of just the boxes around it? In yours you're only going to have boxes and I just wanted to give you a preview of a feature. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off so mine looks exactly like yours. But just so you know, it's going to be available to you really, really soon. So yours is going to look like this. It's going to select that. I know it's selected because I have a selection box. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and select my next one. And I'm going to go through the same process again. I'm going to come down and I can pick a fancy fill, I can pick any of my fills here. Let me just show you if I picked a wave color blend. Now obviously I don't want the green, so I could drop down the green and I could come on down and look until I found a color I liked to go with it. Now apply that. What a pretty little fill. Obviously they don't match, but we could do the wave fill, the wave color blend. You can have a lot of fun here and you can get real creative with all of this. Now see, I may not know how to do a blend, but the minute I clicked Wave Color Blend and I've got just Wave Gradient, I just have a Wave Fill, I have just a Color Blend Fill, I could pick any of these. But the minute I do, anything available to me comes up in front of me. I can decide how I want to do this. I could do a convex here, I could do a concave here, and apply that. So you can see you can have a lot of fun without even knowing how to set the densities for blending. How, all of this, we've done it for you. All you have to do is pick the stitch type and then play in the boxes till it gets where you want it to be. So now I've got these two fills to decide what I like. You know, I really like this color blend. So why don't I go ahead and click this side of the heart and change that to the same thing. How cool is that? Now I'm going to go ahead too and change this to, I'm going to do concave and make this one convex and apply. So I can come in here and play and have a good time gives it a little dimension, makes it look a little different. Now I am going to select this 
side of the heart, I'm going to right mouse click copy. Let's right mouse click and paste. And now I've pasted it on top of itself. I'm going to turn that second pasted image. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make that a run stitch. I want to just add a little outline around that. I'm going to select the left side of the heart, right mouse click copy, right mouse click paste, and again I'm going to come down here and just change that into a run stitch. Just kind of gives it a nice finished look. So now I've created both sides of my heart. I've picked a couple of fills that I liked. I've decided I'm going to do the wave fill and I'm ready to stitch this out. Now I could leave it like this. It's going to stitch beautifully. Put it on a cup towel, put it on a cotton blouse, there, any, there's a number of things. But now what if I wanted to put this on, say, Minky? Now this is a different kind of fill to do this with. So it's going to, I don't know about doing something like that because I'm going to have to add underlay. I'm going to have to add a lot of pull comp and work with it for a Minky or a fleece. Now I'm not always sure what to do. So let's see what Walter would do and let's see what it does to our design. These are things we need to look at. So let's go to a wonderful feature called File, Save to Sew. Now with my Save to Sew feature, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick a cotton linen blend because I'm putting this on a cup towel and I digitized it. I'm telling the software I did this. So the software is going to know to look at it from a different perspective than if I'd said I didn't digitize, such as I purchased a design. So I have designs that I've bought from a designer. I want my software to look at it a little different. So with that selection, I'm going to say, is this solid and dense? No, this is an open, airy stitch. It does have an outline, but it's still open and very airy. Am I going to hoop the fabric for this? I probably am. I'm going to say next. Now I'm going to say, Walter, look at this, look at my stitch types, look at what I'm doing. And I want you to apply density underlay pull compensation for this design on a linen cotton blend. I'm going to go to next. It's going to tell me exactly how to stabilize this, because that's critical. How do I stabilize? If I don't understand all the different stabilizers with the different fabrics and the different design types, I can ask Walter. He's going to tell me in here with my Save to Sew feature. I'm going to know because all of that's going to be put in for me. Right in front of me, I can read what to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And now that I've finished it, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I can save it into any design format. I remember, we're machine agnostics. We love all your machines. So once I've done that, I would have saved it onto my jump drive, into my hard drive, wherever I want to save it. Once I've done that, notice that Walter has kind of worked on this design, so it's going to work for me. I don't like what it looks like. I wanted it a little denser, a little different. So remember, undo is your best friend. If you don't like what Walter did to your design, just undo it. You could go back because I knew this was going to be different because of the kind of fill I have in it. I have an open airy fill. And if I'm putting this on a cotton, this is going to be fine. But now if I were going to put this on a minky or a fleece, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to ha let Walter come in and put heavy underlay in it and work with it but that would ruin this little design feature. So this heart that I have, did, I have created is not going to be for something like that. If I wanted to do, put this let's say on a minky blanket for a grandchild, I would come in here and again I would have to change to a different fill type. But how easy would that be? Just come down here, pick a solid fill. I liked the fancy fill. I could come in here and pick out of any one of them I wanted to pick from. I could try different ones to see the one I liked. And when I got that right, then I would go to Walter and I would ask him to go ahead and put in the pull compensation, 
the underlay and density because Minky's very specialized. I don't even want to guess. So I could come in here and play with this and do it that way. So again, you see, now let's look at these two. Let's go File, Save to Sew. With my Save to Sew feature, I digitize this. I'm going to say Next. I'm going to apply New Densities Pull Compensation. Again, I've got my stabilizers and I'm going to finish. Now I have let Walter fix this so it would stitch on a minky here. Lots of fun. Go through your Save to Sew feature. Use it a lot. Enjoy your design. Realize I can put any fill in it. And we have worked with an image file. They're all the same. You bring in an image file. If you want to use your magic wand and do it piece by piece, segment by segment, this is how you would use your magic wand. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it gave you something to think about in the fills and how easy it is to use image files to create a design. Hope you have a happy holiday. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day.